If we take a look over on the left hand side of our screen, we'll see the stroke pop up. And your stroke type will greatly affect how your stroke is created across the surface of your model. Many of the brushes inside the brush pop up have different strokes applied to them, which is why you'll get different effects with many of the different brushes. So by default, you're actually using the dot stroke when you're using the default standard brush. And this will give you something that you would pretty much expect to get, which is while you brush across the surface, you're going to get a continuous line of that stroke across the surface. Now if I switch my stroke type to the next one, which is the drag rectangle, I'll turn up my Z intensity a little bit so we can see this. Instead of dragging across the surface, as I click and move my cursor, it's going to be drawing that stroke out from the location where I started the click from. So I can find another location, click, drag, and you can see that that stroke is drawing out in that single area. If I switch over to freehand, this is much like the default dot stroke, but it's going to be applying many more instances of that actual dot over the course of the stroke, which gives us a much smoother stroke. In most cases, you won't notice a difference between the drag dot and the freehand stroke. Next we have the spray stroke, and the spray stroke will essentially spray your stroke across the surface as you're moving across. Now things like the spray stroke and the drag dot are going to make a lot more sense if we actually apply an alpha to this. So again, by using the standard brush, we have our dot stroke applied, and we don't have any alpha. If we click on the alpha pop-up, you're going to see many different alphas loaded in here. So I'll just simply switch this to something like Alpha 58, which looks a little bit like a flower. And then I'm going to switch over to that drag dot. As I click and drag, you can see I'm dragging that flower onto the surface of my model. I'll turn my Z intensity down a little bit. So I'll click and drag, and you can see that I'll draw that alpha out. If I switch to another alpha, we can click and drag that alpha out along the surface. You can also use these alphas with the standard dot stroke that we had by default. Switch back to that flower, and you can see that now I'm dragging this across the surface. You can get some very interesting effects, and as I mentioned, a lot of these brushes here in the brush pop-up have many, many different alphas and stroke types applied to them. So the best thing to do is just use your standard brush, jump in here, and switch between your different stroke types as you switch up your alphas and experiment. I can switch over to the drag dot, which is a little bit similar to the drag rectangle, but instead of dragging out in a specific location where I start to click, I can click and drag and actually move this across the surface, and then when I let go, that's where I'll leave it. Your draw size will affect the size of the alpha in this case. So for instance, I'll take my draw size up, click, and I can move this across the surface, and just drop it off wherever I want. You'll also notice in the alpha palette that you have the ability to import your own alpha. We're not going to get into that in this video, but in later videos we're going to see how we can import our own alpha and even create with 2.5D brushes really, really unique alphas inside ZBrush.